We're live. I think. I hope this works. Okay. Um, all right. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Wonderful. All right. Um, hey. So, do you guys have your notes out? Yes. Do you have your worksheet out? Yes. Yeah, get those things out there, please. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about proteins. We'll go through the answers on that sheet, and then you're actually going to do an activity where you're holding proteins today. Um, but let's do a quick uh, review of proteins. So this is what your assignment would have been on over the weekend. Okay, protein structure. So looking at this, if we're seeing... Okay, if we're seeing our primary structure eventually to our end protein structure, we're not on anything right now. So when we talk about this primary structure, that's the order of amino acids, right? We're building the order of amino acids. And this is through what type of bond? Peptide. Peptide bond. Yeah, because we're building a what? A polypeptide, hence the name of peptide bond. When we get to secondary structure, we have two different things that can happen. We can either have the alpha helix shape or the beta pleated shape, that's because of what type of bonds? Hydrogen bonds only, only hydrogen bonds. Eventually, going to, oh sorry, let's add this question. If we're looking at hydrogen bonds in our structure, <coughs> what's another way we could talk about what type of folding is happening at this level? What's that? Is it a coil? Uh, well, yeah, you can have the coil, the helix shape, or the pleated, like crimp sheet, but what type of amino acid are folding together? Local. Local. So we're talking about local folding between amino acids. Going to our tertiary structure, which then would say long distance amino acid folding, and these happen through what type of bonds? A lot. A lot. <laughs> sure are a lot. Specifically four, let's talk about what they are. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is one. Not peptide, that's already here. What's up? Ionic is another one. Disulfide bridges, and last one. Hydrophobic interaction. Okay? So now, some proteins stop here, but a lot go on to the coronary structure. What happens at the coronary structure? Multiple polypeptide chains coming together, usually due to what type of interactions? Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic interactions. Okay, great. So that is all the questions that you guys had on that sheet. Let's talk about the answers. And if you need me to explain, uh, you might want to do that. Okay, we're starting on that model two on here. Uh, it says on that primary structure, so that first polypeptide sequence that we're seeing, draw an arrow to two different peptide bonds. Someone tell me, how would you know if you're looking at a peptide bond? In between the O and an N. In between a nitrogen and a carbon, because we know every single amino acid is going to have what as its backbone? Carbon. Some carbon. Hydrogen. No, as its backbone. Someone said, I think it. N C C. Say it louder. N C C. N C C, right? So when we see N C C, every time we see an N to a next C, um, or sorry, a C to the next N, said that backwards, you're going to have a peptide bond. So anywhere where there's a C to N bonding, that's a peptide bond. Then it says circle three separate amino acids. How do we know if it's amino acids? Caleb already told us it has an NCC in there. Does yeah. the N have to be in the middle? What do you mean? So like when we're looking at your polypeptide chain up there, you should see it starts at an N. <coughs> then the backbone goes NCCN. That right there is your peptide box. And now we're going N, C, C again on that backbone. And then we go N, C, C again. And we're talking about there's another peptide bond, right? Um, and when we look at these, the backbone of an amino acid is 
and the CC, so if we look at this, with all the other stuff on it, with the R group, you just need to make sure that you're boxing or what are you boxing or circling? Circling. Circling. And it has an NCC. This next one over here, no matter what's off of it, that is another amino acid. So if we actually count how many are total on here, we start way at the left end with NCC. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total amino acids in that polypeptide chain. Does that make sense? Is that the top one? We're looking at the polypeptide chain at the top. Yep. Okay. Go to the next one. Um, it's saying all the stuff about changing order of amino acids. Then it says use that information to write a definition of the primary structure of a protein. Can someone share with us what your definition of a primary structure is? I could think of four words to say it. If you have more, that's really fun. Safe place. Do you have one? Okay guys, primary structure is what? Primary structure is what? Amino acid chain. The amino acid chain, right? So we're talking about order of amino acids. That's all primary structure is, order of amino acids. Um, so then we go to secondary. We already answered this. What type of bonds are holding those together? I thought that was going to be a more exciting than that was. But hydrogen bonds. Yes, hydrogen bonds. And then we say, what groups on the amino acids are always involved in these bonds? So we're looking at those. What's that? Uh, look at this. So we're doing secondary structure. What is on there? I have your picture on the front. Is it our groups? <laughs> I mean, I will tell you eventually, but we're going to be answering this question, okay? So like if we look at this poly, uh, poly uh, that we're starting to hold with this hydrogen bond. Is it the R groups that are doing that? Look at this NCC. What would be the N R group on this? No, it's not the R groups. Okay, we're talking about the double bonded oxygen, or which we call a carbonyl group, to those hydrogens. Right? Do you see the carbonyl group, which eventually was then. We know at the end, NCC is a carboxyl group, but it bonded to the next amino acid. So we have this carbonyl group here, the carbon double bonded to the oxygen, to the hydrogen down there. So everybody's seen this. Okay. All right. Um, it says, then you have to draw to a rectangle around two different R groups. We know what the R groups are. The branching off part, right? That's different or variable in each amino acid. Okay. Um, is there any interaction between R groups and the secondary structure? No, there's not. Okay, secondary protein structure can take form of alpha or beta. I mean, hopefully you understand the difference on here. So the drawing, which one is helical? The second one. Why? Because it's helix shape. It's spiral shape, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then which one's the beaded? Beaded. Leaded shape? Yeah. The first one, because you have this crimping. And then it says write a grammatically correct sentence that summarizes how the secondary protein structure is formed from the primary structure. Primary structure is just a chain of amino acids with secondary they're bonded together by hydrogen bonds, by that method. Okay. Um, all right, so then we're going to the tertiary structure. Tertiary structure, we have all those different types of bonds. Um, if we're looking at this with our tertiary structure on here, and we start at the top middle, what type of bond is that? Hydrogen bond. Going over here, which one is that? Disulfide bridge. We see the two sulfurs, di, two sulfurs, disulfide bridge connecting those polypeptides or the polypeptides. Um, which one is this one? Ionic. We see the negative, we see the positive. Those are ionic bonds coming together. And this down here would be a what? Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. 
homophobic interaction. Okay, so what part of the amino acid participates in this interaction? This this one, but very specifically of the amino acid is what part? The backbone or the R group? The R group, we all got it, the R group. Okay, how does your answer in part B differ from the bonds that are in the secondary structure? The secondary between R groups? No. No, no tertiary. Um, okay, what type of functional groups or atoms would need to be present in the R groups for hydrogen bonding to occur? What are we seeing here? You definitely need what for hydrogen bonding? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. To, uh, uh, well, in the one that we, yep, in the one that we're seeing, we can see the COH, which would be, uh, no double bonded to O, so not carboxyl bonding. there's no double bonded. But if we're looking at, do they show you really, we have that OH? Hydroxyl. Hydroxyl. Um, okay, what type of functional group or atoms would need to be pre present in the R groups for hydrophobic interactions? So we see these hydrophobic interactions, what's happening there? Methyl. Methyl. Also, we're going to say those hydrocarbons, right? Which that is. That is <coughs> How many polypeptide chains are shown in this one? It tells you. Three. How many, uh, no, sorry, many proteins, but not all have fourth level coronary structure. Um, how many, oh wait. Oh, sorry, I was doing the wrong model. Sorry, in model three, there's only one. My bad, go back to number 19. I skipped ahead. So this is model three, there's only one polypeptide. But when we go to the coronary structure, how many are there? Three. Now we have three. And what type of interactions or bonds hold this in place? <coughs> Hydrophobic interactions. Is it one one? What's that? today as well, but I do want to talk about denaturation and that's the last part of this packet. It's like three pretty simple questions. <coughs> if you want to do that chart, you can. You don't have to because that should already be in your notes. But, what's that? Uh, no. No, we don't. Uh, okay, but it would definitely be helpful to study for a test. Okay, let's talk about this protein denaturation. This is actually what your lab is going to be that we're going to start tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to say this now, and I'll say it again. Your homework for tonight is to read the Enzyme Lab. It's on Schoology in the Chapter 5 folder. It's called Pineapple <coughs> Enzyme Lab. It's like a page and a half of information that you need to know to understand what this lab is looking at. <coughs> proteins. We're looking at proteins very specifically enzymatic proteins. Um, but read through that, and then minimally, and this is three different labs that we're doing. Minimally for tomorrow, since we're gonna set it up, you need hypothesis, null hypothesis for lab one. There's a data table there for you to draw in your notes. I would draw that in there. Uh, <coughs> minimally that, okay? I'll say it again before you do today. But, protein denaturation. So, a word you need to know is denaturation. What does denaturation mean? Unfolding of a protein. You would also want to know what degree of folding we are disrupting in the structure. So, um, we are looking at <coughs> that secondary and tertiary structure where we have all those bonds. Why? Because all these things, temperature, pH, salinity, they can go and break those bonds and therefore unfold that protein. A protein has a complex shape because eventually we need this active site here, right? And, Unfold, we know.
know that structure determines function. Oh, that was pretty good. Good structure determines <coughs> function, and now we don't have the same structure. Therefore, we don't have the same function. Actually, it's non-functional at all. Um, so, like when you talk about things like body temperature, or pH of your blood, why is that important that we have to have it in a normal range? Because once our temperature goes too high, protein levels. What happens if our blood starts to get acidic? Proteins start to unfold. And then cells don't work. And then you have cell death. And then you have tissue death. And then you have organ failure. And then you have possible actual death. Actual death, yes. Okay. Um, in biology size, it doesn't matter, but shape definitely does. And that's what we're talking about for proteins. Okay. Uh, and then this is something that happens in our body that is, it like blows my mind, is that if we're talking about forming proteins, forming polypeptides, um, we know, well actually we haven't really talked about cells that you remember from bio class, that ribosomes, where proteins are made, are found in the <coughs> cell, within the cytoplasm and the endoplasmic reticulum. If these polypeptides are going out into the cytoplasm, that's actually a very toxic place where tons of chemical reactions are happening. So they need to be protected. And we have these other <coughs> proteins, which we call chaperone and proteins. And what happens is they are a little chaperone for this polypeptide in order to move to the place it needs to go and protect it um, from any harm that could be done to it. So this polypeptide goes into the chaperone and protein where there's water on the inside. The cap goes on top. This protects it from all that chemical all those chemical reactions that are happening in the cytoplasm so it can fold correctly and then once it's done, it can be sent off to the Golgi apparatus most likely and then go where it needs to go. But when we're looking at this, I'm gonna say this, eventually you're gonna to have to know this whole story. This is gonna be the first time that we talk about it, but you remember it from biology. The information to make all the proteins in our body is located where? DNA, okay? Your DNA sits in the nucleus. Now, DNA does not hold the language to make proteins, so that needs to be transferred to mRNA. mRNA eventually goes outside the nucleus through nuclear pores to attach to a ribosome on the rough endoplasmic reticulum and start to build a polypeptide chain. That polypeptide chain travels through the endoplasmic reticulum, which is also a very protective hallway for these proteins um, in order to hold, eventually to go into a vesicle to travel to the Golgi apparatus where it is sorted, packed, finished folding, and then delivered to where it needs to go, either inside the cell or outside of the cell. Okay, We remember these things-ish. Kind of, love it. Okay, well we'll talk about it in more detail as well. Um, but today you're gonna make a protein. So you need, we need six groups, because that's literally all I have. Um, so can we get six groups? One, like a group to your name. That's what we got.
look everywhere for wire, and I had my kids, so they were going to be antsy. So then me and Mr. Meyer cut chicken wire last night. And got me this. Oh, yeah. But we're making it work. You guys are making it work. Got that. Longer one. So, we are going to make the backbone of all of you who decided to go class. I'm back. And David, you are going to do that. Big Dave. I didn't even notice you were gone, Big Dave. I didn't. Thank you, Jason. And you are being recorded. You are being recorded. You are. Hey. Um, so, what we're going to do is, you can see this at the top, is that we are going to make an amino acid chain of eight amino acids on this. Uh, wire. Okay. Uh, I want you to turn to the back of the first page. For our amino acids, really we're going to look at the interaction of those R groups, and we have three options. You see we have hydrophobic, you see we have is this positively charged, and negatively charged. And those are going to be the shapes that you are going to fold this wire into for those different amino acids. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is figure out our amino acid order. So this is how we're going to do this. Turn it to the front again. You and your partner are going to roll the dice. When you roll the dice, you're either going to get a one, two, three, or four, and um, you're going to then put hydrophobic on there. If you do roll a five or six, you are going to be having a positively charged or negatively charged amino acid. Hey, everybody focus here. Positively charged. If you pick that first time and then you roll a five or six next, then you pick negatively charged after that. Really, we just need at least one positive charge and one negative charge in your amino acid sequence. Seven and eight, you get to pick. Let's say all these are hydrophobic, then you have to pick one negative and one positive charge. Okay, and that all says that. So roll your dice, find your amino acid sequence, write it down. Okay. Not yet, not yet. So now with your wire again. Wait. If you 
No, you could have made a bigger loop. Hold on, Dave. No, it was supposed to be a small loop. It could be. You can make it bigger first and then just twist it. It doesn't have to be that small loop. You can't chew it. That's why I'm going to make it for your favorite. Yeah, I'll do it all the time. Yeah. I'll do it all the time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Look at that. That's a lot of weird. It's more hard. You guys are taking your time. It's because you have it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm an artist. I do. I do. I do I do water that's in your back? Are we supposed to draw it with all of the screwdrivers to do it? Yeah, you have to draw it with a loop. Sadly, it's surprising that you don't have a screwdriver. You don't need out the beta in that one. Just your... No, you don't need out the beta. Do I have pliers? I don't even have pliers. Oh, you know what I do have, though? Right, you know? Double positive and negative charge. I have a socket extension and a quarter inch to have the pocket. Oh, you don't need to put the alpha and the beta in there just to do a lot. This one is pretty cool. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. I don't have screwdriver pliers, but I do have socket extended arms. Okay, part C. Part C. Part C. Part C. Part C. Part C. Okay, part C. You have to make it into a protein. You have two questions to help guide you. Once you think you have your protein done, raise your hand and I have to check off on your lap. You might have questions answered. Yes, you have to answer those questions. Those questions, 
in your lab journal, but you would want to write a hypothesis and a null hypothesis for lab number one. You guys look at Questions people? on that? Great. We can start setting up lab number two tomorrow with a group. That's normally what happens because it just means she has a favorite. Okay. If there's a star next to it, it just means. Ah, it's just for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh! Hey, you gotta go! Are we doing anything? Yeah, we need to go. It's just gonna be getting loud.